Hey gamers, what's going on? Just like before in this video, I'm going to talk about how I am continuing to develop my NES game and what new things and improvements I've added to it. As usual, you can get the ROMs with these updates from the links that are in the description. So what have I accomplished so far? I wouldn't be me if I didn't leave some silly bugs. Apparently the checkpoint I added last time didn't save the warmth points. So after dying and respawning a few times, you would eventually freeze to death. At least I noticed this and now it is fixed. After that little fix, I moved to a bigger task and that was to improve the boss fight. I don't remember if I mentioned it, but the way the boss looked and the way you fought it was definitely not final. It was more like a placeholder. The boss used the same exact AI as a regular werewolf in the game. But since the boss meta sprite was much bigger and the attack was much stronger, this behavior seemed a little bit off. Obviously, I had to make some changes as soon as possible. I decided to add some telegraphing to the attack animation. It is really a very common thing nowadays. You might not notice it if you're a casual gamer, but if you look closely, you will be able to see it in most action-packed games. It's either a subtle movement, some particular animations or some sounds that let you know that the enemy is about to attack and you need to be ready. In my case, I decided to add an extra warning frame for the boss. The only problem was that the tile set was already full. At first I thought maybe I should use some blinking instead. Or maybe I should design and draw a completely new boss. Maybe this time it should be smaller so I could fit in more animations. But then I thought, you know what? What if I could try to make these new animation frames out of existing tiles? So I sat down and started messing around. It was kind of an eye-opening discovery that apparently I don't really need to put sprites in the grid and have the exact same uh, amount of sprites in each row. I can do whatever I want, as long as I don't add extra sprites. So I finally managed to make new frames where the boss raises its arm. I only had to draw two new tiles. Everything else is done by changing the horizontal and vertical mirroring and moving sprites around. After writing some code, the new frames finally appeared in the game. And the way the boss moved now and attacked looked much cooler than before. And it was clear that when it raises its hand, you had to watch out. But that still wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to add a knockback effect to the player's character. So it would fly away after getting hit by the boss. I thought it would be a more obvious way to show to the player that the damage was dealt. Of course it would be too expensive to calculate the force and the friction of the knockback in every frame. So I created an array of fixed point numbers that would be gradually added to the character's coordinates. This would happen in the same routine where the player's coordinates are changed by the gamepad's input. That way the modified character's position would be checked by the same collision detection code and I would avoid most dreaded thing, where the character gets stuck in a wall after being hit. I can guarantee this will never happen. The movement worked and looked okay, at least to me. So I figured why not to add it everywhere, even when you're getting hit by regular animals. And so I did. Unfortunately, it didn't look so good this time. It was okay when the werewolves hit you, but... The dog and boar attacks looked weird, mainly because these characters only had a single attack frame where they opened their jaws. Imagine a dog coming at you and opening its mouth and you suddenly fly away. 
yeah that's not weird at all <laughs> so i thought what if i could add the warning frames for all the aggressive npcs as well and i did and you know what it looks a lot better now basically the old attack frames became warning frames and i created new attack frames from existing tiles and they simply show that animal closes its mouth since this warning frame is now universal for all the npcs now i had to create a separate state in the npc code for it so each npc could have only one of five states it's either dead idle attacking warning and damaged but there was a flaw in my logic for example what if NPC would get damaged when it is in warning state? It will never be able to enter attack state because the damaged state would bring it to the idle state and it would have to enter the warning state again. So I completely missed the fact that for example if you constantly spam the boss with your attacks it would never be able to fight back. So if you just kept hitting the attack button, you would eventually destroy the boss without taking any damage yourself. But that would be too easy and maybe even fun, right? As you know, I don't want that. I want to punish the player in the worst possible way. So I changed the damage state into a status flag. So now an NPC can be idle and damaged or attacking and damaged at the same time. So now the player attacks don't have any effect on the NPC other than the NPC losing some health points and flashing red for a second. So yeah, now the aggressive NPCs are even tougher than before. After that, I went back to the boss. Remember how I told that uh, the empty space below the boss room will be used for something else? Well, it was obviously intended for the speech dialogue that the boss would say. But for that to happen, I needed to move the map of the boss room to the third bank of the ROM where all the indoor maps were located. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. So what should I do? One way would be to compress the indoor maps so the empty tiles would be eliminated but it has to be still easy to test each tile value for the collision detection that seemed too complicated for me maybe there's an easier solution than this what about the tile graphics in this bank i definitely chose the most lazy way to load them whenever you enter an indoor location i just simply copy 8 kilobytes of graphics from the beginning of this bank to the cartridge ram if you look at the sprite tile set you will notice that it has mostly the same tiles as in the main tile set in the bank zero because you would obviously need the main character graphics and all the items the only tiles that are different here are the npc tiles so what if instead of copying an entire sprite tile set i would just upload these unique tiles to my character ram on top of existing tile set this way i think i could save about three kilobytes and that's a lot so i sat down and without much effort i modified my tile copy routine so that it would be possible to specify how many pages of data i would upload to the ram by the way, one 256 byte page is equal to one row of tileset graphics. I also specified the data offset so I could load my tiles exactly where they should be and not at the beginning of the tileset. I also should mention that the NES screen tool lets you to save smaller tilesets. You can even save a area that you selected to a binary blob. When I was done, I was pleasantly surprised by the free space available. I did the same thing to the alien tileset because it had the same issue. A half of the tileset was practically identical to the main one. So by getting rid of the duplicate tiles, I managed to free up about 6 kilobytes in both banks. 
And now I could finally move the boss room to the third bank and make the boss the fourth villager. Now when you enter the boss room, the boss will no longer attack you, but instead of that, it will greet you with a bizarre phrase. In order to start the boss battle, you will have to attack the boss first. And that's about it. By the way, I'm trying to bring back the updates to two videos per month. But I don't think I will be able to do that this month. So expect a new video at the beginning of May. And if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe the channel. So thanks for watching till the end and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.